Remember when you would learn how to make art out of junk with Neil? And again, just wiggle away. <laughs> Try it yourself. Let's go back. Tamagotchi theory. The Y2K. Hello there, and welcome to this special edition of Art Attack. Hold on. To tell the story of Art Attack, we first need to go back, back to Liverpool, England in 1977. The very first champions of the UK's Battle of the Bands competitions are about to be crowned, and Queen's Brian May sits in as judge and will decide who will receive a recording contract. The new wave heavy metal band Marseille are declared the winners. The group consists of Paul Dale on lead vocals, Andy Charters on guitar, Keith Knowles, no relation to Beyonce, on drums, Steve Dinwoody on bass, and on lead guitar is a young Neil Buchanan. That's right, before Neil became a beloved children's host in the United Kingdom and across North America, he was headbanging on tour with bands like Nazareth, Whitesnake, and Judas Priest. One particular appearance with Marseille on Saturday Banana, a British children's television show, was the first domino to fall that would lead to his career in children's television, when he met the producers of a morning show called Number 73. During the summer of 1980, Marseille's record and management company Mountain began to crumble, and the band was stuck in a two-year legal battle that led to three members of the group walking away, including Neil. Then, on June 5, 1982, the second series of number 73 premiered, and a familiar face unofficially joined the cast. Look at that hair. It looks like Patrick Swayze's hair and Art Garfunkel's hair had a baby, and it was raised by Billy from Stranger Things. See, me, Harry, and the lads were out on the town last night, celebrating Frederick's last day as a single man. We didn't get in until 5 o'clock this morning, so as you can imagine, we're all feeling a bit fragile. I don't know if starting a children's television show off with someone talking about a hangover is a British thing or an 80s thing, but it's fucking fantastic. After five years, number 73, now just called 73, came to an end in March 1988. Neil didn't miss a beat though when it came to Saturday morning children's programs because in September he debuted with another show called Motormouth in the exact same time slot as 73. The show was essentially a variety show for kids. Less than a year into the show is when Neil linked up with the producer of number 73, Tim Edmonds, and the two began working on a new children's television show. The idea would come from a segment within number 73 in which Neil would teach kids how to complete art projects using everyday items, and thus Art Attack was born. Appropriately, the pilot episode was filmed with what they had at their disposal, and therefore filmed inside an unused swimming pool and gorilla style on the streets of England. In the pilot, we see a glimmer of what Art Attack would become, with Neil doing one of his large-scale art attacks and showing off a flawless James Bond impression. Oh, and we also get to see Princess Diana, and at the time, Prince Charles, jam out with the Queen on the drums. They kind of have a South Park Canadian look going for them. This low-budget pilot paid off, because in 1990, Art Attack premiered on TVS, but now with the set, kids would come to know and love throughout the series run. It consisted of oversized arts and crafts supplies like paintbrushes, pencils, glue, and an eraser so big it could probably erase the mistake of casting Jared Leto in Morbius. In the first episode, Neil sports a red jean jacket, and maybe it was just a random choice for this episode, but I can't picture Neil wearing anything else but red. Especially his red sweater with the Art Attack logo plastered across the front that he would later wear in every episode. Once Art Attack was on the air for a few years, it began to find its flow, and each episode became more formulaic. Let me take you through what an episode of Art Attack would consist of when I was watching growing up. Each episode would begin with a bunch of computer animated art supplies hitting one another like an elaborate domino effect, and underlined by a chaotic mixture of steel drums, brass instruments, and electronic screeching that somehow works. If you're wondering why I'm describing the theme song instead of playing it, well I'd like this video to stay up on my channel. Then Neil would pop out from one of the props on set with a big smile on his face and asking a question that would lead into a craft, like this. Have you got a really special photograph that you want to frame, but can't afford one of those fancy, expensive frames? What you need is one of these. The first craft would usually go along with the concept of the show, creating art out of everyday items like cotton balls, old newspapers, or egg cartons, among other things. Once Neil was finished, we would see this guy. His name is The Head. I know, it's kind of ironic for a show about creativity to have a name of a character not be very creative. In the first two seasons, the head was a real guy's head until they changed it to this puppet one that would last for the rest of the series. The head's purpose was to comment on the art Neil created and also give kids at home last minute tips like Remember to ask for an adult's help when using scissors, or don't forget to use extra glue on the corners, or never search two girls one cup while eating soft serve ice cream. You know, fun tips like that. 
After the first craft is generally when we would get my favorite part of the show, the giant art attack. Neil would create an image on a grand scale using everyday items like salt, clothing, money, or even cars. Sometimes he would do it on frosted windows the side of buildings, but the majority of them were on the ground to reveal the artwork from an aerial view. After returning to the art attack set, Neil would do either a drawing or a painting, something kids could do with just a pen, markers, or paint, and the final piece he would do after that was another craft. Later on in the series, the show also incorporated kids' fan art, and that's what a regular episode of Art Attack would look like back in the 90s and the early 2000s. One thing I completely forgot about Art Attack upon rewatching it was the PVA glue. As a kid, I had no idea what PVA glue was. I guess I just assumed it was a different kind of glue. Neil says it a lot throughout the show, so much that if it was on the air today, I feel like it would have been a meme. When you've done your picture, get some PVA glue, some PVA glue, some PVA glue, and PVA glue, some PVA glue, take some PVA glue, take some PVA glue. I haven't really done any crafts like these at my age now, but I figured it was time to look up what PVA glue stood for. It stands for polyvinyl acetate. That's right, don't tell me you never learned something from one of my videos. Unless you already knew that, then stop being a show off. While looking up PVA glue, I found that you could actually buy Art Attack branded PVA glue. So do you know what I did? I closed my laptop because making online purchases after 2am is a lesson I don't need to learn again. Unfortunately, as all things go, Art Attack with Neil Buchanan came to an end in 2007 after CITV cancelled the show after an 18 year run. Hello there, and welcome to Art Attack. <laughs> and the good thing is, they can't turn you off. ta -da. This show will forever hold a special place in my heart. Just watching the old episodes this week had me flashing back to sitting down in front of the television and munching on some goldfish. The crackers, I'm not a monster. And watching Art Attack on TVO Kids here in Canada. If you're like me, you may be wondering what Neil has been up to since. Well, Neil actually did a little reunion with his band Marseille from 2008 to 2014. He still paints some incredible art pieces like these, and in 2020 he denied rumors that he was indeed the evasive artist Banksy, which based on his past work totally makes sense, and I wish we lived in a world where Neil did end up being Banksy. I always see posts about Mr. Rogers or Bob Ross as the faces of wholesome entertainment, but Neil Buchanan was that for me and many other children growing up in the 90s. You have no idea how happy and relieved I was doing research on Art Attack and Neil having not found any weird stuff about his past. He seemingly was just a nice guy who had a knack for children's entertainment and just wanted to educate kids on something he was passionate about, and I didn't even discuss his time on other kids shows like Finder Keepers, It's a Mystery, and Animal Crazy, appearing on all of these while hosting Art Attack. All I have to say is Neil Buchanan for Prime Minister 2025. Now before I end this video I have two things to say. First is a quick update on my last video, the Nintendo 64. I'm proud to announce I have finally beaten Super Mario 64 with all 120 stars. It took me over 25 years, and if I don't ever see that clock level again, I'll be happy. My dog wasn't as thrilled as I was with this accomplishment. Trapper, we did it! Trapper, we did it! We did it, bud! Trapper, we did it! We're the champions! Smoke weed every day! Finally, I just want to say thank you to everyone who watches, follows, comments, and likes this channel because we just hit 500 subscribers. This means we get a cool channel handle, which is now at Remember One Channel. So let's keep this momentum rolling, and if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. May everyone who liked this video find an unlimited source of PVA glue. Thanks, everyone.